It's incredible how intuition works. Sometimes we listen to that gut feeling and then the universe reveals that we were right. Amy's story for me proves that angels and the universe are trying to protect and guide us and that everything has a divine purpose and order and that we're constantly weaving through destiny and free will. This is Amy's story. This is the highway to healing. Amy, thank you so much for being a part of today's episode. I am really looking forward to hearing your story. Thank you for having me, Delisa. Absolutely. So you've got to take us back to that day. You woke up just probably like any normal day in 2007, but it ended up being a day that completely transformed your life. So walk us through that day. What happened? Yeah. So in 2007, that day we were planning on having my sister's birthday party. Um, So we were just getting ready, um, making sure we had supplies and all that stuff. And then um, we realized that, you know, we still need some things and we had to go to the store So my sister was going to go to the store and my mom told me to go with her, but I just had this, this gut feeling that something was going to happen or like this feeling where I shouldn't go, but then I had to go. So I just, my mom just kind of forced me to go. And so I went and sure enough, we got into a really bad rollover accident. Um, our van flipped over twice. We were, we were hanging upside down and we were just, I just remember trying to unbuckle the seatbelt. My sister and I were trying to unbuckle each other's seatbelt because we thought the van was going to explode, but we just, we just kind of gave up. Like there was glass everywhere. You, You hear that ringing in your noise. And I, I do remember blacking out for a little bit too, but I, I think like the adrenaline kind of woke me up. And then I just hear like a bunch of screaming, the smell of rubber, like from the airbags and all that stuff. And, um, I noticed that my window, well, my window was broken. So there were people nearby who kind of ran over to slide me out of the seatbelt, like grab me out because I, I easily slipped through, but for my sister, she wasn't so lucky with that. She had to wait a little bit longer because her door was jammed. Her window didn't break. And so, and she was stuck between the steering wheel. So we kind of, I mean, like there were people around who called the ambulance. So we had to wait for them to come. I just remember like I got out first. So I just remember standing in front of the van and, you know, just telling everybody to please help my sister, please help my sister. Cause I, I just really felt like the van was going to explode and thankfully it didn't, but the paramedics were able to get my sister out. They had to cut open the seatbelt and all that stuff. But, um, they sat us down on the sidewalk. People were offering us water and we were just kind of zoned out. Like we didn't, we didn't think that what was happening was real. We we're just kind of, you know, just like looking around us and everything was just silent. It's kind of like you see all this chaos happening in front of you and you're just, you're just stuck there, like watching it like a movie. But um, the paramedics sat us down on the sidewalk. They took our vitals and they told us they were getting ready to load us onto the ambulance, but for some reason, my sister and I refused to go. Um, I don't know. We were just like, I guess we were scared in that way. Like we didn't want to go to the hospital. We didn't want to make a big deal out of it because we felt fine. Um, but yeah, so we felt fine and we didn't go. And then the paramedics, they they left and we kind of... We just, my dad was there, my grandpa was there, and we just kind of rode home. And I remember just walking with one shoe and I had, I had glass in my eye, I had glass in my arm, and my sister's head had glass cut her head, like her forehead, but we just went home. So yeah. Oh my God. That's how I can remember. (laughs) 
How old were the two of you when this happened? I was 10 or turning 10 and my sister was 18 at the time. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong. You told me that you were turning left. How did the accident actually happen? Because somebody ended up running in to the van, correct? Yeah. So we were, um, we were yielding, obviously when you make a left turn, you have to yield. So we saw that it was a yellow light and the, there were no cars coming or there was a car far away, but it would have turned red by the time he got to the light. So my sister made a left turn and the guy just kind of sped up and hit us really hard because he was driving like a small little Prius and we're driving a van. So he had to hit us really hard in order for our van to flip over twice. So that's I, how, yeah, yeah. I would say so. It sounds <laughs> yeah. like uh, the driver was going incredibly fast. I'm glad that your sister was able to get out of um, the van and that people were um, there to help. And it, it sounds like mm-hmm. you, you both were in an incredible amount of shock. Uh, you went on to share with me in the pre-interview that you felt like an angel had saved you. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So the reason I felt that way was because we just, we didn't have any major injuries, I would say. And, you know, it opened up a lot. Like it made you kind of realize like, well, it made me realize how, grateful I was for my life and how, you know, I should appreciate everything in my life. And so, um, I mean, I've had my gifts since I was a little girl, like seeing spirits and all that stuff. And when that accident happened, I felt like it opened up my gifts even more. It was like a kind of like a transformation type of stage to where you're more aware of things. So, I felt that it opened up my gifts more. And so later down the road, when I was doing, um, I decided to have my first Reiki session. I've never heard of it, but I decided to do it anyways when I moved here to Las Vegas um, because I was so drawn to it and it kind of unlocked trauma for me. So the one thing that came up was my car accident. And when it unlocked that memory for me, I just saw like a I saw an angel standing over us and, and it was just like standing there and making sure that we were okay. Like we were safe. And I just felt like it was like a protective energy. I mean, I felt it before, like after the accident and stuff, like I knew we were saved for a reason, but having that Reiki session, it was like confirmation for me that, you know, like that I wasn't crazy that there are angels out there that protect you. So. Yeah. Reiki is interesting. I know some people love it and, and go frequently yeah. and some people are like, I have no idea what you're talking about. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Uh, I think energy healing can be profound. So as you yeah. think back on the accident, what you went through and, and how it led to this healing and awakening within you. Are there any other elements of like what you point your finger to in terms of why did it happen? Was there a bigger purpose? Like, because I think everything happens for a reason. So have you come up with why you think that accident had to happen that day? You know, I never really given it much thought, but I do felt like, you know, I just, I had to be there for a reason. So I felt like maybe I had to be there so that my sister wasn't alone in it because then we can help each other down the road because my sister still suffers from anxiety. Like and since that day, she still does not drive because it just, it just hit her hard. It kind of traumatized her and she will not drive. And it's been like, it's been over 10 years. So um, I can definitely see why, why I was there, I guess, because I'm more, I kind of healed from it more than she has. So I feel like I had to kind of bring that healing for her as well and kind of help her get through it. Absolutely. And just thinking just from an outsider's perspective, and I've interviewed people that have gone through traumatic experiences for this podcast and 
sometimes when there's multiple people involved, there's a profound healing that happens between those that were there and Mm -hmm. some people that feel like they, you know, made a mistake or they caused something to happen and they carry that around. and, And it's fascinating for me to hear the stories because I can see energetically the huge lesson and growth opportunity that comes from that and the healing that can happen on so many levels within the people that were there. Yeah. And, and honestly, I felt like it was also an eye opener to like how we were living our lives because my parents, they came from um, Thailand. They were refugees in Thailand and they got sponsored here um, by, by a church in Phoenix. So they, when they came to the United States, they were struggling, you know, like we always struggled with money. We lived in a house, like in a bad neighborhood. And, you know, sometimes we just, there's no food on the table or we have to like get hand-me-downs with clothes and stuff. So I felt like it was an eye opener too, to also just appreciate what you have and how to just appreciate how lucky you are to be alive, no matter the bad experiences that come with it. I love that. And you are a medium and you've done work with spirit and spark. And, you know, there may be people that are listening to this and say, you know, I've never had my own experience. I've never felt protected by an angel. Um, I have no idea if things happen for a reason, you know, they, they might be a little bit more on the skeptical side. So knowing that you've had all of these different experiences as a medium and going through this car accident, what would you tell people? I think that there will always be skeptics out there, but I think, I think that angels and spirits are everywhere. If you would just pay attention to it, like they can come in, you know, forms of, you know, numbers and signs like symbols, feathers, butterflies and all that stuff. So I think if they would just pay attention then they'll start to recognize the synchronicities. So I think that, yeah, (laughs) absolutely. Well, I am so thrilled that you shared the story with us today and that you and your sister made it out of that van and that you're Mm -hmm. here all of these years later, helping other people through their awakening and helping people understand how those spirits and the universe is communicating with them. So thank you for being a part of today's episode, Amy. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Delisa. To learn more about Amy's work, go to amychang.com. We've included a link in our show notes. Stories like this one are important to tell. It reminds us that even during the darkest times, we can always find light. We can always choose faith over fear. For exclusive content, please join my Spark Plug members only community and apply to be a guest on this show. Find out more at spiritandspark.com.